Now, I remember a year ago speaking to a company on BBC Radio Derby about how they turned their family-run clothing, usual business, day-to-day -day operation to suddenly cutting through some frustrating red tape to make thousands of nurses scrubs for hospitals across the East Midlands. And this was in the middle at the start, or I should say at the start of the pandemic, when if you recall, there was a real shortage of PPE and this local business stepped up and thought, we want to do this for the, for the greater good for the country. And I was fascinated a year ago when we spoke to them. So I thought we'd catch up a year on Christopher Nieper, the CEO, CEO of David Nieper joins me. Hello, Christopher. Good afternoon, Simon. You've got very good memory, by the way. <laughs> well, I remember being handed a bit of paper and they said, we need to talk about this because you'd suddenly, well, you tell us, you'd suddenly change your day-to-day -day operation of what you normally do, hadn't you? Well, if you think back, Simon, we were in a real crisis, weren't we? The the hospitals all over the UK suddenly ran out of PPE. And of course, normally, I think these supplies come from the Far East, but the pandemic started in the Far East. And so the supplies were cut off probably a month or two before we even realised we needed it in the UK. So when the crisis happened, the supplies ran out. And of course, there was this PPE um, shortage all over the place. And hospitals were running out and our healthcare heroes on the front line were not able to get protected properly. And on the 23rd of March, which is nearly a year ago, the Prime Minister said, please go home, everybody, uh, save lives, protect the NHS and stop working. But within a week, we were working again and we were contacted by Derby Hospital, Derby and Burton Hospital Trust. And they said, look, can you help us? And so we set to and we found some fabric and we started making scrubs. That's the, you know, the top and tunic top and trouser that they wear in hospitals. And then it just built up and up and up. And over the three months or so from then, over the spring and summer, I think we must have clothed about 40,000 people in our healthcare service. And we supplied 27 different hospitals around the UK, but mostly, of course, in, in our region here. And I think our staff were really, really proud to do that. We had to put all our customers aside. We had to donate our time at cost and it was significant expense for us to do all this. But, you know, I would do the same again. We had to help our National Health Service in its hour of need. Wow. I just remember uh, feeling uh, quite proud that as a country we do this kind of thing, Christopher, when we spoke to you last year. How, I remember you mentioning the frustrating red tape. Was it quite difficult to get the operation underway? Was there, was there much in your way, obstacle-wise, like health and safety measures? Well, I think, I think they centrally buy the PPE for the NHS. There's a central buying operation and they never throughout the whole period managed to place an order with us and I think they didn't place many orders with anybody else either because they wanted to settle on a, on a particular design and a spec and that took time and it had to be accredited and approved and so forth but we we just cut through all that because what happened is Derby hospitals came along and said here's an example here's a garment can you make one like this so we just cut the patterns exactly the same and started doing it. And all of those 40,000 garments were made directly for hospitals who ordered directly from us without any central buying at all. So, yeah, we short circuited the whole system and without it, we would ne we'd never have supplied them. <laughs> We've yeah. had so many thank you letters from hospitals. It's been amazing. But that there is we are. wonderful. It's Derbyshire yeah. people and Derbyshire spirit, you know, and Derbyshire people who've put their hand to the wheel here. Yeah, and I remember speaking to NHS workers at the time on BBC Radio Derby who said they were going home and cutting up old old um, clothes just to just to make face masks. So I think it's very easy to forget it. We had a massive shortage of PPE, and it was essential that we had people like you step up. What happened after that, Christopher? Do you continue to make this for the NHS? Well, um, we did for a while, but we couldn't leave our customers unsupplied for too long. But we did do something else, I think, for the NHS, which is we took care to make reusable clothes. 
instead of disposable gowns that are only worn once and then thrown away or filling landfill sites or incinerated, we used a fabric which could be washed and laundered a hundred times over. So that 40,000 garments, you can multiply that by a hundred for the number of washes and wears that they would have done. So that would have protected the environment and had far less carbon footprint and so forth. So I think we did a good job for uh, the UK and for the planet in doing that. But getting back to our customers, we can't we can't leave all those aside forever because they're our lifeblood. And I'm happy to say that the customers have come back, the European customers have come back, the English customers have come back, and we're now in full full strength and all five factories are fully fully um flat out at the moment supplying orders orders have come back there doesn't seem to be no lack of confidence in, in the economy and i'm pleased to say we're hiring more people and creating more jobs and that's a good thing to do here in derbyshire oh now that is good news that the, the sound of a, a healthy economy and job creation sounds really good out of interest christopher you mentioned how many times you can wash those items of clothing off the top of my head, I would love to know how you work that out. Do you have to wash these things a thousand times? Or how do you figure that out? Yeah. Well, they they have to be tested to a medical standard for, you know, waterproofness, if you like. They have a more technical word for it, a sort of hydrostatic head. But they, they test it, so they wash it again and again and again. And after 100 washes, they still met the, the medical standard. Um, it maybe could last for 150 or 200, but we do know it was accredited to 100 washes. And that means 100 times less garments to import from somewhere overseas. It's a, it's a really good thing to do. And I hope that the NHS will do this across the country now um, and create jobs making these things in the UK and use reusable textiles because it works all round. That's and Christopher, remind us what, what you normally make when you're not making scrubs. Yes, we're, we're a fashion company and we make we make women's fashion and we, so we make dresses and skirts and trousers and we make uh, knitwear. We have a knitting plant and we make nightwear and we make underwear and we print our own fabrics as well and dye our own fabrics here in Orfordton. So it's a completely, um, you call it vertical operation where we're doing everything in house. It's a, it's a wonderful fashion company. We've been here for 60 years and I'm the second generation. Excellent. Well, it's great to catch up a year on, Christopher. Real pleasure talking to you. And nice to see that things are looking very positive uh, for business, for the economy and job creation as well. Christopher Nieper is the CEO of David Nieper speaking to me on BBC Radio Derby today. Uh, coming up, another play of my first.